Senator Ashby, of course, uh, representing the Sacramento area uh, and Elk Grove um, in the 8th Senatorial District uh, of California. Um, uh, we have a bunch of things in common. Uh, her and I are both local elected officials and uh, her and I, our doctorates are in law. They're with both lawyers by training. Um, and uh, uh, it's certainly uh, uh, her interest in emergency management on the Senate side is uh, uh, is really refreshing, especially someone who has represented a local jurisdiction and understands uh, uh, where our issues are uh, with respect to that. I really appreciate you uh, coming to the Senate and uh, and really uh, focusing on emergency management. So we're delighted to have you. Uh, Senator, the floor is yours. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I want to thank the special the special districts and, and your sponsors for having a dialogue around emergency preparedness. Uh, there couldn't be a better time, obviously, to do it. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we've all seen over the last month or so as we've dealt with the storms where being prepared and having the information being connected to each other has been really helpful. It sounds like you heard a little bit about my background. I most, he, I'm in the state Senate now, but three months ago, I was vice mayor of the city of Sacramento. So I'm going through my transition over here as well in that regard. But at the city level, I served on many boards. So flood control boards, transit boards, uh, land use boards, libraries. In, in many of those instances, I had the opportunity to serve with special district commissioners from a variety of types of, of special districts. And I think it is quite remarkable, particularly in California, how special districts play in with local governances like cities and counties to make some of the most important decisions across our state. So uh, you all are an integral part of the dialogue here around not just preparedness, but the ongoing discussion around emergency management and emergency services. Uh, emergency preparedness, as it turns out, unintentionally, has become a bit of a theme across my time in office. When I first ran, and I still live here, I landed in a community called Natomas, which is the northern part of the city of Sacramento. Natomas is exists for 110,000 residents behind about 42 miles of levees. After Hurricane Katrina hit, those levees were decertified. Nothing happened, per se, other than the standard was raised post-Katrina. And so everyone, all 110,000 people that lived here, uh, suddenly needed mandatory flood insurance, would be unable to rebuild their homes should something happen to them, and really needed an aggressive plan or pathway forward to address the risk of flood. And I spent the first six years of my time as an elected official going back to Washington, D.C., working on a WERDA bill and uh, helping to with our local delegation and, and members of Congress back there to get that across the finish line. And uh, now the community that I live in enjoys a slightly higher level of flood protection, but still seeks a 200 year designation. Obviously drought is something that has plagued our region as well. I always like to point this out because it is the two sided coin that is California. For the six years that I was fighting to get my district out of a floodplain, five of those years we were in a drought. I say this all the time, but drought is just the other side of flood control. And when you learn about one or you're working towards addressing one, you're also always thinking of the other. Come back to that a little bit later. Then, of course, in, in, uh, in California, you're not preparing if you're not thinking about wildfires and public safety as well. And now I'm in the state Senate and my role there is as vice chair of the Joint Legislative Emergency Management Committee. And I think earlier today you heard from my counterpart in the assembly, Freddie Rodriguez. The structure of that committee is, I'm new, but I'm going to tell you it's a little bit strange to me. Uh, the assembly has a standing committee on emergency management and Chairman Rodriguez chairs both that and then 
is the assembly chair for the joint committee, which I think makes sense. And I think that's wise of the assembly. On the Senate side, we don't have a standing committee, although we do have a committee for which emergency management is included, but it's not necessarily linked to the joint committee with the assembly. And so I serve as the lead for the Senate on that joint committee. One of the things I think we ought to look to in the future is how the Senate's role plays out there. I'd like to be a part of, in my time here, whatever time I am granted uh, in, in this building, I would like to use some of it to strengthen the Senate's role in emergency management. There are a couple of members of my team on this call, uh, Chris Clemens and Michelle, I think is on here as well, Michelle Baker. They are both superstars from the Senate District 8 team. And Chris Clemens serves as the staff to this Joint Legislative Emergency Management Committee, and he does an outstanding job. He and I and Michelle have had many conversations about what we'd like to do over the next year. Uh, Obviously, Chairman Rodriguez has a plan as well, and he's got us lined up with a few really good hearings coming up, the next one being on earthquakes on the 13th. But Chris and I have also talked about adding into that dialogue a little bit more conversation on the future of EMS in our state and and really how we roll that out and how we include everyone in the dialogue. I'd like to see the state the state Senate take a leadership role in some of those areas. And I think Chris and Michelle will be helping me achieve that goal. You know, there's a lot to be said about the importance of emergency preparedness at the state level versus the local level. It's very different. At the local level, I've done everything from go outside and help round people up and get them off of a river front uh, during a flood evacuation. I have obviously hosted many town hall forums on emergency preparedness, but at the state level, it's far more about resources and making sure that the California Office of Emergency Services has what they need. By the way, they have a new leader. I didn't see her on your list today, but her name is Nancy Ward. She lives here in Sacramento. She has worked at almost every level of government in this area, and she is by all means a national expert on emergency management and emergency services. She's phenomenal. And I think she'll lead us into really uh, technologically advanced days. I had the opportunity for the Senate Democratic Caucus to lead a panel discussion with her. And had you been there, what you would have heard her talk about was this incredible technology that the state of California is investing in and using to better predict uh, not only weather events, but natural disasters like earthquakes, tracking fault lines, all of all of that, and also talking a lot about cyber risks and how to protect intellectual property, the preparedness efforts. And I love this. She talked a lot about how she is putting in place programs that will reach communities that are sometimes left out of the dialogue around preparedness. So there's an equity component to all of this which I think is incredibly important. We had a robust conversation around insurance because that conversation is going to have to evolve with us as well. And, and you know, they polled the leadership of the Senate Demo- Democratic Caucus, polled the caucus and asked them what they wanted to talk about. And I think one thing that might be interesting to all of you is that emergency management landed at the top, second only to dealing with homelessness and the housing crisis. And I think that really speaks to our concerns in this state and across all of our regions around the impacts of climate and how we're preparing for that future. And I would say that the takeaway I've gotten in my short time here in the Senate and working with folks like Chris and like uh, Chairman Rodriguez and Nancy Ward and even the governor's team is that there is hope because this is California and we're a very innovative place. And while the climate is moving on us, we are aggressively pursuing goals too. And we are also moving forward with these predictive technologies that are incredibly helpful. 
And we're doing everything we can to not leave anyone behind in that dialogue. So I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that. And I think I'd like to kind of close out my speaking part here and then open myself up for questions. And if I don't have the answers, I'm sure Chris and Michelle will help me or we will get back to the group. But I want to leave you with some thoughts about, so what's next? And maybe since I'm your speaker today, what, what, what is my role going to be and what's next? One of the big dialogues that we are having and that we've even touched on here today is drought. And I do have a bill uh, in this go round. It's Senate Bill 659. And it seeks to work with the governor's already stated priorities around addressing drought before that date of 2040 that we all know kind of looms. And for me, I think it's really important that the water purveyor, so Aqua, the Regional Water Authority, these groups, I'm sure you're familiar, many of you probably serve on some of those boards, that they're a big part of that discussion. And so SB 659 seeks to start the discussion around groundwater recharge and setting that as a priority and then working towards that goal. There are very few things that are more politically charged than discussions around water, but we can do a better job of collection and recharge. And that is a one step in the right direction that I think we could make collectively together and then pragmatically work our way through the rest, who's in control, how, who gets which water, where we store it. Those are conversations to come, but I think that we need to start by committing to that groundwater recharge effort. My first act as a Senator, actually first official act was to ask the governor to declare a state of emergency in my County because of the, the weather events that we had in January. And, uh, you know, no time like the present to, to jump right into emergency preparedness. I actually did that before I was even appointed to this emergency preparedness board. But what that does for your community, as so many of you know, is it makes FEMA resources available. It allows your city and county to draw down not only resources, but to bring in uh, additional help and begin to really serve the community in a meaningful way. And, and what I love about this governor is that he did it in advance, which was fantastic because it allowed for preparedness to be part of the discussion too, and not just response or reaction. So for me, what's next is working on SB 659, solidifying the state Senate's role in emergency preparedness, figuring out the best way to partner with Assemblymember Rodriguez on moving these topics forward, working with my uh, highly trained and intelligent staff that have been working on these issues for a long time on the next iteration of EMS for the state of California and working with Nancy Ward in the Office of Emergency Services to make sure that her tenure is as productive as I believe that it will be, making sure she has what she needs to advance our state and supporting Governor Gavin Newsom's aggressive agenda on addressing the climate. So I think that I'll stop there. And then if you guys have questions for me, I'll do the best I can to answer them. Thank you, Senator. I'm um, watching for questions, but uh, um, I don't see any at this point. But uh, uh, let me uh, perhaps uh, ask, because we're way ahead of our time, so we're good. Um, and uh, uh, one of them was, uh, of course, uh, Chairman Rodriguez spoke about uh, um, earthquakes, uh, especially uh, being kind of out of sight, out of mind uh, when they're not occurring, of course. And then, of course, uh, we had the major tragedy in uh, southern Turkey and uh, northern Syria recently uh, with uh, a tragic loss of uh, substantial human life. Um, California is uh, prone to earthquakes and uh, Chairman Rodriguez is uh, uh, planning a hearing around the topic. Uh, is there any similar moves on the Senate side? I think he's well also proposing a, a piece of legislation to allow the funding to remain um, for retrofitting, et cetera. Yeah, the hearing that he is proposing is with the joint committee. So it does include the Senate members, including myself. That That is the hearing that is on March 13th. And 
you know, like I indicated, the advantage that the assembly has is that we can work together on the joint committee and then they can also move some of these items through their standing committee. The Senate doesn't mirror uh, that setup. But we, the Senate will be involved in those discussions. The conversation around an earthquake in Turkey and the potential of earthquakes in California is relevant and one that should definitely be discussed. And it's, uh, you know, what happened in Turkey is a perfect storm. It's more than one emergency happening all at once. And I think California is an incredible state. We're all so fortunate to get to live here, but we do have to know what our potential is and in both positive and negative ways and prepare for it. So Chairman Rodriguez is wise to set that hearing. And I am proud to sit with him as his vice chair through that hearing. And, you know, what those hearings really do is start a dialogue that needs to happen across legislative platforms. And it is a way, it is something, it is a way that the legislature can initiate a dialogue that then engages not just the state agencies and the governor, but also local entities like the people on this call and the folks that are, you know, serving on the Sacramento Municipality Utility District or the Water District or, you know, any of our parks and recs. All of the groups play a role. I know in the city of Sacramento, for example, most of our parks are built out as detention basins. So they serve two purposes. They serve a recreational purpose on, on your normal every average day. But when we have a weather event, many of the parks in Sacramento are part of the flood control plan. They pull water away from the people and property to keep our community safe. It's a, it's a planful, mindful community development process that keeps people safe. And we need more of that in California. And I'll just say to you, you know, these are complicated topics and it's I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to folks and keep you ahead of schedule here. But if people do have questions and they just aren't formulating them now, you are more than welcome to send us to us. Chris Clemens is on the call and uh, he'd be more than happy. I'm sure he can put in the chat his contact information if he hasn't already. He's usually two steps ahead of me. And then you can, you know, send us your questions and we'd be happy to follow up and get answers for any of you. As a, as a great staffer, he is indeed two steps ahead of you because he already put it in the chat. The best. <laughs> um, I wanted to also ask, uh, Senator, um, we had uh, today a couple of panels on the drought as well as the wildfire prevention and recovery. And of course, you know, we're a state that is prone to all of these things and God forbid, a combination of all of them. Um, so what can the special districts or municipalities do in order to partner with the state or as an action item, perhaps you can suggest uh, for them to participate, not only to uh, some of these hearings, but also perhaps uh, advocate for particular items. Do you have any bills or any anything yeah. that you can suggest that they we can help you advocate? Yeah, Absolutely. I think there are a few of them. My bill, SB 659, which is on groundwater recharge, I would uh, ask them to take a hard look at, especially if drought or water flood control is one of the things that you're charged with on your special district, or if you're on a committee or you serve as your special district's representative to a larger entity uh, in the region that's, that is working on groundwater or drought or any, any aspect of access to water across the state of California. But there are other senators and assembly members who are bringing forward robust uh, packages. Susan Eggman, the senator out of Stockton, has a very large package that she's bringing forward that is on infrastructure. And it's really focused on flood control and the Delta and how we protect vulnerable communities across the state. There are other emergency preparedness efforts that might not be quite as clear. Uh, Senator Caballero is looking at how to protect hospitals in the Valley that are facing closure because losing hospitals does not help us with being prepared for emergencies. We learned that in the last couple of years. So there are many members of the state legislature that are seeking ways to protect their 
constituencies and protect Mm -hmm. the 40 million people in this state through infrastructure, through industry, through technology. And you all have a role to play in that. And your role is to be involved in those committees and commissions that you're on, but pay attention to that legislation and weigh in. Have your organizations send letters, come to these hearings, participate, uh, write letters. If you if you can't come in, in person to the state capitol, there's always ways to communicate by email. And the system for committee hearings still allows for folks to call in. Those are all ways that you can participate in this dialogue in meaningful ways. And then many of you, as part of your special districts, are also involved in large lobbying organizations. I would I would suggest to you that every time you sit down annually to set up your priorities and talk about what's most important, that you consider how emergency preparedness and emergency management and emergency services affect the everyday constituents that you're responsible for and prioritize that as something that you're working on, partnering with, and uh, and that you engage not only with the state and the federal government on these issues, but with your local partners as well. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, they, there seems to be, a, a, it, it's a little off perhaps, but uh, um, thinking about electrification, a uh, question here is about whether the legislature is looking at uh, uh, resilient energy backup systems, or will, will the gas generators be expected to be phased out at some point, and what will potentially replace them? Yeah, it's actually a super relevant question, because when you think about some of the things that happened in the storms, for example, uh, it, it, many of the plants that were run on non-gas ended up being on gas when generators kicked in. And so the question then becomes, will we ever truly be away from the gas or will we need it at at a minimum in backup situations? I think the answer lies in how much we invest in technology. And I really believe that the state of California, you know this, everybody knows this, it's the land of the entrepreneur. If ever there was a place that would come up with the battery technologies and the backup technologies necessary to address these needs, it's California. And this is one of the things that Nancy Ward talked about specifically, actually, not just protecting the technologies that we have in place now and putting them in play, but also investing in the technology that is to come. There are many legislators, Ben Allen and uh, John Laird Rain come to mind first, Senators Laird and Senator Allen, both heavily participate in this space of uh, advancing technology to uh, address climate goals. And I think that there are really interesting dialogues around various forms of power in the state of California And it is one more reason to protect all of those resources that we have, like groundwater, so that when we're having those discussions, we have a multitude of options. Indeed. And and thanks for the shout out to Ben Allen. Uh, Ben is my senator and and a good friend of mine. So uh, uh, he's definitely working hard in that space. But you have a the one thing I can tell you, and I'm brand new. So this is as fresh perspective as it gets. You have a very good legislature in the state of California. The Senate in particular, which is where I spend my time, I'm still getting to know many of the assembly members, but the Senate is full of incredibly intelligent, dedicated people who are trying very hard to make good decisions for 40 million people every day. It's hard for me to even impress upon you the level of intellect that you have in people like Senator Skinner and Senator Atkins and Senator McGuire and and Senator Smallwood and Senator Bradford and the level of effort that they put into their everyday work on behalf of the state of California is tremendous. And I uh, I was proud as a candidate, but um, uh, you know I'm I feel now that I'm in the room and observing them up front. I just want to yell from the top of the dome to California. Good job. You guys really picked some people that care deeply about your futures, about your your kids' futures, about the quality of life that you have. 
And every day in that building, there are people working hard to discuss these issues and they argue with each other and they find pathways forward. And I I have no doubt that this state is what it is in terms of being the fourth largest economy in the world and a hub of innovation and a safe haven for everybody to be whoever they choose to be because of the incredible leadership that's in that building. Senator, that's great to hear. And I think that with the proper collaboration uh, across various government levels in the state of California, California can achieve a lot. Uh, There's no question about that. And you and I have been at the local level. uh, And unfortunately, at times, we have not seen eye to eye with our state legislature. And, And I hope that with this new folks who have come in and with an interest in local control as well, uh, we will be able to collaborate in the future and serve the same constituents that we all serve um, together. So uh, I really appreciate you coming. And uh, really, on behalf of certainly the Price School at USC, we thank you for uh, your uh, dedication and your service at the local level and now at the state level. We're delighted to have you there. Uh, Thank you very much. That's the other thing people can do, run for higher office, because I think it does make a really big difference when you come from the local. My perspective is definitely different than folks who haven't experienced that local level of implementation. So consider it. We, We appreciate that more than you know. So it's it's all good. Well, thank you very much again. And uh, uh, we appreciate you coming. Uh, Megan, uh, I think we're going to wrap up. So uh, um, any last comments? Thank you, Senator. On behalf of CSDA, we really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Frank and Ashley, for organizing. Um, to the sponsors again, thank you. What an amazing and informative day. I did confirm with Ashley that she will uh, provide us those links later and we'll be able to get them to the attendees as well, um, because I know everyone was giving out a lot of terrific information, which is the best case scenario. So I'll let you close it out, but uh, just thank you to everyone for their participation. Megan, thank you again for the third time for partnering with us. And uh, I want to thank again, Haig uh, at Edison, who uh, was kind of the catalyst most of the time around uh, all of us bringing us together on a regular basis. Um, And also, uh, of course, to all of our speakers, uh, it has been, uh, as I see in the chat, someone saying thank you and top notch. It has been indeed top notch. um, And uh, all speakers have done so well. And the fact that we even finish right on the dot is even more uh, important than anything else, I presume. So on behalf of uh, University of Southern California, Seoul Price School of Public Policy, I thank you all for participating. Uh, We had well over 230, 250 people participate on this webinar, which uh, has been absolutely terrific. I thank Ashley for all the work that she has done. It's not easy to uh, uh, plan these things and deliver these things, and she does so, so masterfully. Um, on our staff here. Uh, And uh, thank you all. And uh, we appreciate again, our uh, sponsors, Edison, Optimum Seismic, uh, certainly uh, California Special District uh, Association and the foundation and the Price School. Thank you again until we meet again, uh, hopefully next year. And let's keep us ourselves safe. And uh, thank you to uh, the assembly member and thank you for the Senator for coming and focusing on such a topic uh, of emergency management. Thank you all, have a great the rest of your day and a great weekend. We're adjourned.